<laughs> oh, what in the world? What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code ITRESOLVES10YP for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. Before we jump into this, I just want to remind you, please subscribe to the channel. It really does mean a lot to us and if you subscribe right now, that is one of many ways that you can enter for our giveaway for a free Kamigawa Neon Dynasty draft booster box. That's right, a full draft booster box. So please go check that out. We do have a detailed video. There's a, there's a hair on my microphone. <laughs> We do have a detailed video here on YouTube, as well as some more information and an article over on our website, itresolvesmtg.com. Please go check that out for details and uh, make sure you take all the opportunities to enter because it really would mean a lot. And again, it's a great way to get some free cards. So anyway, let's talk about today's deck. This one is a very, very straightforward deck that I put together myself. Um, and it's very basic. It's like as basic as it gets. This is the starting point for this list. So. Uh, obviously it's mono green. The idea is essentially just landfall creatures. That's all I had in my head. I wanted to make it as simple as I possibly could. Uh, and I did want to build around Storm the Festival a little bit. So Storm the Festival, obviously a, <clears throat> excuse me, fantastic card. Six mana, look at the top five cards of your deck. Put any two permanents with mana value five or less from among them onto the battlefield. The rest on the bottom of your library in any order. So the goal was to get there as fast as I could and have some good payoffs that would make make Storm the Festival worth it because you can put a bunch of these little two drops in to ramp you, but that doesn't seem very good in the long run. So what we did is we ramped in the sense that we've got Druid class allowing us to play some extra lands, crucially gaining us life in the process, which is nice. Uh, Lotus Cobra, so whenever a land enters the battlefield, we get to add an extra mana of any color. And then of course, Prosperous Innkeeper, which is gonna spit a treasure out, but also gain us life anytime a creature comes down. So now anytime we play a creature or a land, we gain some life. Scoot Swarm, the idea being that anytime a land comes into play, we get extra tokens. Uh, the idea hopefully is to gain quite a bit of life off of this with the Innkeeper. Uh, now, this also works very well with things like Ashaya, which makes all of our creatures lands. Uh, so this double triggers these, but it also means that anytime we play a creature, we also are playing a land, which also triggers the Scoot Swarm, if that all makes sense. Uh, then we have uh, Sarath the Viper's Fang. This is truly just to protect what we have. Uh, the idea is that it gives every untapped creature we control hexproof, which makes it very difficult for the opponent to really deal with them unless they're sweeping. Now, obviously, there are a lot of sweepers around, so I fully expect we're going to have trouble against those decks, uh, but I still wanted to get this down. And again, it is hittable off of, or, or it's, a, it's a target from Storm the Festival. Uh, Toski, Bearer of Secrets, another good way to uh, not only have an indestructible threat, albeit just a 1-1, uh, but it's not counterable and every time it attacks and deals damage to an opponent, or any of our creatures deal damage to an opponent, we get to draw a card. Now the trick there is we've got hopefully lots of land on the field, and we're going to want to be continuously playing threats, continuously playing more things. This is hopefully going to make that easier for us. We also get to go wide with the Scoot Swarm, and so uh, it's it's usually pretty easy to get some damage in. Uh, now, in that five drop slot, we already kind of talked about Ashaya. I'm running the full four. That's not normally the right call. <laughs> uh, it's a legendary creature. We can't have more than one on the field, so I don't know about that, but I really wanted to get Ashaya down, which is why I put the full four in there. But we also have things like Ren and Seven, an obvious include here. Again, the full four, not necessarily the best call, but the idea here is that we can spit out those giant, giant tree folk uh, and hopefully just kind of swing for the win very quickly or get some extra lands onto the battlefield as needed. Now, we also have Glorious Sunrise. This is an interesting one. The idea here is that we want some long-term value cards. So if they happen to be sweeping or whatever, we'd love to be able to have something on the field that's gonna still provide us value later on in the game. This is going to do that for us. It gains us some life, it can draw us some cards, it uh, gives us a little extra mana if we need it, or it gives trample to a creature. That's kind of the key 
uh, because if we can give this giant tree folk or a Shia trample, theoretically we should be able to win no problem. So we'll see how this plays out, guys. I'm sticking with the 24 lands. I kind of want a high-ish land count, uh, given that, you know, lands mean a, a great deal to this deck. And again, this is something I, I threw together. So please keep in mind, if you've got suggestions for it or anything like that, share them, because I would love to see what you guys have to have to play with here. This is totally just like a initial draft of this list, but I really like it. I, I played it a little bit, it's pretty fun. All right, uh, one thing I will do actually right away here, because this is something I was thinking about recently, I want to put two of these in here. We need uh, a little bit of man land action, so let's go ahead and throw the layer of the Hydra in there, and let's go ahead and jump into game one. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. Now, this isn't a super exciting hand, but we do have a mana ramper as well as some, some really good payoffs here, so I'm going to go for it. We'll see if it works. Um, again, guys, I can't stress enough how much of a draft this deck is. Uh, this is solely just to kind of get a starting point. Ooh, excuse me. Ooh, had a little burp there. Strong coffee this morning. Uh, but I do want to uh, just see what we can come up with here. That is all. Uh, let's go ahead and drop the Lotus Cobra. Uh, Serith is actually quite nice. That's something that we can drop down uh, this upcoming turn, assuming the Lotus Cobra sticks. Um, and it looks like they're going to be black X. They might be something else, but the idea is they're probably going to have some point and click removal or like a Meat Hook Massacre or something like that. So we will see. Okay, Field of Ruin. Uh, Infernal Grasp? No, Blood Chief's Thirst. Okay, kind of expected something like that. That is okay. It's not great, but it's fine. Um, I mean, I guess we can do this for one. <laughs> uh, and get an attack in. <laughs> yeah. We did it. Really glad we threw those layer of the Hydras in there. That was one thing that I did note yesterday when I created this deck, and so I wanted to make sure we did that. Oh, interesting. Uh, it might be Ren and Seven. It could be Glorious Sunrise, though, too. Um, Serith is playable next turn, so that would kind of be my pick. Um, but all of these are very good options. Storm the Festival is the only one that's like, okay, well, we can just replay that later because it does have flashback. But we're not ramping as hard as we would like, so, you know, we'll see. We will see. Uh, Serith is a really big one against them, I assume. Uh, the only trick is we don't have any other creatures on the field, so it doesn't really matter at the moment. Um, but that's fine. That land is actually quite useful for us. Uh, it's just going to guarantee that we've got the land we need to play either the Renin 7 or the Glorious Sunrise, both of which are going to be very useful for us. And hey, that lair has done three damage, so I'm, <laughs> I'm taking it. Um, now, they do have a Field of Ruin. They could just activate that, kill the lair if they would like. Uh, but instead, it looks like they're going to play the Blood Soaked Reveler. Interesting. Okay. Um, what do we want to do? I mean, I think it's just this. We could reveal to try and guarantee that we get Storm the Festival. Um, which I actually kind of like. I'm going to do that. This should guarantee that we've got enough lands for the storm. Yes. Uh, we did have to sacrifice a scoot swarm for that, which is a little unfortunate, but, um, I think that that's okay. This just, it makes sure that we've got the lands we need. Now, we probably would have gotten there anyway, but I just want to make sure. I mean, think about it this way. If we didn't do that, uh, chances of us having a storm the festival on this upcoming turn are very, very nil, uh, or very slim at the very least. We're also well ahead on mana, um, not something I've actually paid much attention to, but they are very behind here. Uh, good news is we've got plenty of basics because that's mostly our land base, <laughs> uh, which is fine by me. Um, now they can get an attack in here if they'd like. Uh, it doesn't really matter to me. Sure, that's fine. Uh, Good thing about Ren and Seven is it starts on a very high loyalty. Uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and Storm. Absolutely love this card. We're very fortunate that the uh, opponent is not doing so hot on the... Uh... Let's do this. If they'd have been Lair would have been the better option, but um, we're doing pretty, pretty well against their mana base here, so... Uh, let's go ahead and do this. 
No reason not to, really. Gain a life out of the deal as well. And now, basically, we're forcing them to have a sweeper, um, which is kind of the idea here. We, we don't really want them to be able to just one for one everything. So having three creatures out on the field makes a big, big difference against this kind of deck. So we'll see. They could meet Hook Massacre, but that's going to be difficult for the, uh, yeah, that big old tree folk. Um, hopefully they do attack in. So the reason being, we can Toski and then draw some cards. Pretty easy. Uh, that's totally fine. We're down to one on uh, Ren and Seven, but that really doesn't matter that much. Um, they're going to create a Blood Token. Okay. <laughs> Alright. And a little extra there. I like it. Um, we can play Toski and we can play the Glorious Sunrise. So we definitely just do that, right? Uh, we'll auto pay, get that out there. Um, we'll go ahead and plus one the Ren. Gets us two extra lands as well, which is quite nice. All right, what do we want? Do we control? No. Uh, I was gonna say, it'd be nice if we did. <laughs> uh, we'll gain three life. It just keeps us out of the the danger zone. Not that we're really in it, but uh, now we get to draw a couple cards. Ooh, Scoot Swarm being one of them. That's very good. I would love an Ashaya. Ashaya would be amazing right now. Um, we've got all the mana in the world at this point, uh, which is very useful. Um, and truth be told, what we can do is zero out the uh, Renin 7, which drops three lands, which triggers the Lotus Cobra three times, which gives us all the mana we could possibly need for the Storm the Festival just to get that down this coming turn. Uh, it's a nice little two for one. The other option, of course, just being like five, six, seven, eight. So we could play land, play Scoot Swarm, and a second Glorious Sunrise, both of which are great options as well. So I, I built this deck to just be efficient. That's the entire goal of the deck. Uh, and so as of right now, it's, it's doing that quite well. I'm going to go Druid class. We're going to gain some life here. Uh, let's drop Scoot Swarm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> gonna gain a life I like it uh, they could have a kill spell for this like an infernal grasp yeah you got it hey I mean fair enough right like if they've got it they've got it um, let's drop the land make a green um, I guess let's just do this just zero out the Ren. Just gonna throw a two down. We're gonna gain a bunch of life. Uh, we're gonna gain some mana as well. I think we just Glorious Sunrise here. This also sets us up next turn for the Storm of the Festival, so uh, we'll gain three. We'll gain three. Just gain a lot. <laughs> um, I'm actually all too happy to attack with everything here. They get to kill something I know, but I don't really care. Uh, we get to draw two cards which is extraordinarily useful for us, and we've gotten all the life gain that we possibly could want. Uh, there is the Ashaya. Now, they do have hand destruction. We did see that, so... We will see. Um, we've had a very inter... It's kind of funny because this is a game that, like, has really gone our way most of the time, but they have had a number of kill spells which have kept us off of our massive damage stuff, like the, the Tree Folk token, things like that. That's actually kept us off of quite a bit. Uh, and so that's actually pretty relevant. I'm going to Storm the Festival. Uh, this is almost never a bad option, so, uh, I mean, I'm gonna play it. Uh, and let's see what happens. All right, uh, <laughs> I mean, Glorious Anthem, or Glorious Sunrise, not Anthem, plus land. That gives us a Shia mana. Um, yeah, that seems pretty good. Green, uh, we'll play this. Now we have a giant 14-14, and now we trigger the, uh, the Lotus Cobra again. We can go ahead and plus this up. Uh, kind of nice that it taps the Toski, although I kind of wish it hadn't. Uh, Alright. 
Let's reveal. We get two more lands. Um, do we just play this? Yeah, might as well. Alright, so the only trick here is, again, they can just kill the Ashaya um, at some point. Good news is we have a backup, but like... <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> I just love the way this deck plays. Um, I guess we'll just do this, because we do really want... Um, we do really want extra, like, we need them to, to not have multiple kill spells, so this is an option for us here. We'll draw some cards, I think. Uh, we'll draw three. We're at 24 cards in the deck. We've got seven damage to deal. I think we can do it. I think we can do it. There's the Scoot Swarm. Um, these glorious sunrises. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Motto Green Sunrise. Uh, yeah, that's pretty sick. All right. We'll see what the opponent's doing. Ah, love it. Love it, love it. This is a long first game. Uh, this should not be this long. We should have been able to win by now. I think that's a testament to how not great this deck has been built, but uh, it's fine. Everything's fine. Um, I do like the the smoothness of this deck. It does seem to work just efficiently, uh, and that's kind of nice. I just think we we run into, I think for the meta, we're always gonna run into issues with kill spells, things like that. So I just think that's something we have to consider. Toski does help a little bit against like sweepers and removal, um, but the reality is that's just always gonna be a problem for us, so. Sure. All right. Um, mono black blood tokens. Interesting, interesting list. They just continuously deadly to sweep. The thing is, like, unless they sweep, I don't really care about what they draw here. Um, because we've got all the replacements in hand. <laughs> Thanks to these glorious sunrises as well as Toski, like, we're able to draw just a lot of cards. Um, so that's helpful. <laughs> uh, they can blow some stuff up. Sure. You got it. That's fine. I don't. Again, we've got Ashaya. And now we can give this thing plus one, plus one, and trample. So, you know, that's that's helpful. Um, <laughs> let's do this. Um, yeah. <laughs> We'll add green to this. We're gonna storm the festival again, just for the fun of it. Like we don't have to, we win this turn. Um, but I mean, come on, we're, we're here. We gotta do it. This is just a trigger happy deck. That's all this ended up being. <laughs> um, let's do this. <laughs> Can we get the fourth glorious sunrise? We might we may have discarded it, I don't know. Perfect. <laughs> oh man. This is all I've wanted to do this entire time. <laughs> Alright. I love it. Um do we have enough to We do technically. Um I'm gonna do it, because we can trample over. I mean, we're here to have fun, guys. Like, let's just do silly stuff, right? Uh, <laughs> there's the glorious sunrise. We did it. We got all four of them down. <laughs> oh, man. I can't believe this worked in standard. This should not have worked. Like, this should be an easy sweep against deck. Like. just enjoy <laughs> oh what in the world all right uh <laughs> yeah let's get let's get a couple mana um we'll <laughs> we'll throw the druid class out there we could have gained more life that was a mistake um the opponent might be might be a little salty. 
We still haven't activated Ren in 7. Um, not that we need to. Yeah. Oh, we did it. Okay, cool. All right, so one of these glorious sunrises is going to uh, give trample. <laughs> um, in fact, let's just give it all to uh, Ashaya. Let's just do this. We're going to give it four times the trample, which is relevant. Oh, it gives all... <laughs> I... That's so loud <laughs> in my headphones. That is... I didn't realize that's all creatures we control. Whoops. <laughs> that's a little better than I anticipated. Oh, I'm very proud of this. I can't believe this works so well. We're amazing. All right, we're going to give it one more game, uh, but we may only get one more game because that was a very, very long, long one. All right, let's jump into it. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. Um, and do we like this hand? It's not amazing, but we'll we'll try it. Uh, if we get a third land with the Lotus Cobra out, that'll help us get to the Seraph. Uh, oh, and that's actually quite helpful as well. So we'll see what happens. Uh, it may not work out, but honestly, I'm just happy that first game worked so well. <laughs> that's all I care about. Um, cool. We're gonna go ahead and throw the Lotus Cobra down. Chances are, if they've got red in their uh, their deck list, we're we're looking at a burn deck, so Lotus Cobra less likely to make it. But you know, we gotta try. Uh, we do very much need a land off the top here, though. That would be tremendously helpful. Um, a land would help us get the Serith down, uh, which is extraordinarily relevant against a potential burn deck. Uh, obviously, they have some if they've got Prismari Command, so gotta deal with that. But we will see. Um, give me a land. The opponent did not get a land off the the uh, expressive iteration, by the way. I think if we if they had gotten a land, we would have seen it there. Um, but they didn't get it. They're also playing a bit slowly. I wonder if they're just thinking through options. Maybe they've got multiple. Um, but oh, thank goodness. Okay, let's get land down. Okay, there. We're gonna drop that Seraph now. Um, and I'm not going to attack with the Lotus Cobra. I want to keep the Hexproof here. Uh, it just makes it a little more challenging for them to deal with. They have to have a four man or a four damage burn spell before they can damage the Lotus Cobra, which is extraordinarily helpful. Uh, another land would not go amiss. Uh, that would get us to Ren and Seven mana, which would then theoretically get us to more and more lands. So all of this is very useful. Uh, and I think the play is if we can get an extra land. Okay, they do have it. Uh, I think the extra... Ooh, we did not get it. Okay, um, that's a problem <laughs> for obvious reasons. We are going to just attack then. No real reason not to in that sense because obviously, I mean, we're not doing much. So <laughs> uh, unfortunate, but it is what it is. Hopefully they don't just burn out the Lotus Cobra. They really should. It would set us back tremendously. Um, and I'm sure they can. Oh. All right, Goldspan Dragon it is. Uh, now they can still burn us off of this, so... Uh, hopefully they don't, but... Oh, thank goodness. Okay. Perfect. That gains us a life. That also gets us that green mana. We're gonna go here. <clears throat> and we are just going to plus this up. Um, that just gets us extra lands here, which is so, so relevant. Um, three extra lands, in fact, which is important. Um, it also keeps Ren and Seven out of just straight dead Goldspan Dragon range. Um, I mean, we could have dropped the token, but the token wouldn't have been that strong. And we know they've got Demon Bolts here, so they could have dealt with it. Maybe they didn't have another Demon Bolt, I don't know. But I, I think the important thing is that we're, we're hitting our land drops in this instance. <laughs> Another expressive iteration, for sure. Great option. Um, what's kind of nice is if we zero out the Ren, uh, we drop three lands, get three mana, and then can basically do whatever we need to do after that. Um, now, alternatively, we can just drop the, the token, but we've actually got a backup Ren and seven here. We're not in danger of dying this turn that I'm aware of, uh, or next turn, most likely, so... 
don't know. I feel okay about taking the time to like maybe storm the festival just to get an extra couple permanents onto the battlefield. We do need to play catch up a little bit here. Um, now, if they do kill the Lotus Cobra, that's a little less likely, but here they've got six mana available to them and they haven't attacked yet. So they technically have eight mana if they attack. Um, we also gain life, by the way, off of these lands, so that's very relevant. Wow, a second gold span dragon. Okay, that changes the math a little bit here. So they can kill the Renin 7 now. Uh, that's terrifying. We can still storm the festival. Um, and we actually still can can do the Renin 7 trick uh, if we'd like. So let's throw this down first. We're gonna gain a little bit of life, which is fantastic. Um, uh, I don't know what the right play is here. Um, I'm gonna storm the festival. I'm gonna try it. This is a bit of a risky-ish play, uh, but we're gonna try. We'll just see what happens. If it doesn't work, that's fine. Okay, they had a counter. Fair enough. Uh, can't argue with that. Uh, we are gonna attack in. Again, there's no reason not to. These, This isn't doing anything to block, so it doesn't really matter. They also didn't have any mana to man land or burn or anything crazy. <laughs> this druid class gaining us some life is actually very relevant because we've gained at least two life, which has kept us essentially gaining us an extra turn at this point since they're dealing eight per turn. Uh, and so there is some relevancy to that, um, which is kind of nice. Oh. Okay, can they just burn us then? I assume they can. Oh. Fair enough. You got me on that one. I can't argue with it. That was actually kind of a sick game. Uh, we, if that storm the festival had landed, we might have gotten somewhere, but it's all good. Well done, opponent. All right, I know we only got two games in, but let's talk about this deck for a second. All right, so Mono Green Sunrise. I'm calling it Sunrise because I love that. Uh, first game went exceptionally well. I know it took a lot of time, uh, but you could tell it actually did what it was trying to do, which is just get a bunch of value permanents onto the field and draw more cards, gain a bunch of lands and mana and go for it. Uh, so it does work. I think in the second game, we were just behind on mana. Bad keep on my end, for sure. Um, I think we could have done a, quite a bit more had we been on time with our lands. Now, all that to say, we still lost. It is what it is. This deck is solely just a for fun, like, glorious sunrise kind of deck. That was all I really wanted to do was play off of Storm the Festival and see if we could make something happen. I actually really like it, though. I thought it was pretty good. Um, I will continue playing with this list. It's very straightforward, very efficient. Uh, it is a little expensive on the wild card end, though, so I know it's not necessarily the easiest to get your hands on, but it's still fun. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I really do appreciate everybody watching. If you are not already, please subscribe. Uh, it does mean a lot to us. And again, it's, uh, it's a great way to enter for that free Kamigawa draft booster. But uh, I thank you guys again for, so much for watching. It's great to play a deck that I actually put together because a lot of times I don't do that. So I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Have a fantastic day. We'll see you again very soon.